So I uh, made this board game. How do I uh, sell it at your store? Please no. <laughs> Just don't. Just stop what you're doing. Do you have a day job? No? It's my side hustle. You're so, of course it is. <laughs> Just don't, Just hey don't guys, do it. Welcome to another Lords of War Games and Hobbies video. I'm Chris. This is Jay. And uh, we do these kind of videos where we talk industry uh, a couple times a week. So if you like what you see, like and subscribe. That way you can uh, stay up to date with this stuff. Uh, yeah, we're gonna walk. We're gonna just walk a little bit through the eyes of someone who, you know, pretty admirable thing. It's like you're in, in this world. You you know, with, with as bleak as everything is, uh, someone that has the hope and optimism to create something original, uh, put their heart and soul into something, make a physical thing, and say, "I want people to enjoy this." Pretty cool. Um, it, it is. It, it's yeah. Also, but do you know how many board games? Uh, <laughs> Uh, we went on to Board Game Geek last year alone. I think it was was it four thousand nine hundred? It was like something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I heard yeah. that number. Just, just, just so you know, just you're, you're competing with the <laughs> the yeah. was yeah. yeah, yeah, and those Ooh. are games that were like notable enough to make it to like that they're like someone noticed that they're like and you're like published and they're in a. Yeah. It's like okay, how many of those made it onto our shelf in the store? Three, maybe, maybe, maybe three. And they might not. We might not restock them. If they're, how long depends on how long. They take it's so. a. It's yeah. It's it's yeah. literally a bloodbath. Like it's yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Whether you, if your game, if your if your dream is to make a game, uh, all the power to you. But that is po quite possibly the most difficult thing to do these days. We, I, we are in an era. Of I this. still strongly feel like uh, it's like making anything. Like you want to write sure. a book, you want to do art, you want to mm -hmm. whatever. You just the people that are successful at those things just they just do it, and because they can't stop doing it, basically mm, it's like yeah. a weird like they yeah. they have a passion for it, they keep making that thing, and and the sort of uh, success is the thing that kind of like comes as a natural result of that almost. Uh, the people that kind of set out to be like, well, I want to make a card game and I want it to be big. If that's kind of like your starting point, I think that's a very, I think that's, you know, this is me being a little biased. That's a very cynical way to kind of start mm, something mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, it, it, it could happen. You could make it happen. Maybe you're like a business genius, but, um, ultimately I think like, especially with board games and stuff, uh, the ones that, the ones that get the furthest are, they're just like legitimately good products, right? Sure. They're fun games. Uh, and, uh, if we're, if we're looking at so let's 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 reach all the way back to the beginning so like they're in the they're in the step of like they have this like physical product almost like a demo kit or something like that and they're like they're legitimately like I don't know what what to do with this thing mm -hmm. like how do I sell it in your, in your store what would you like what would your first bit of advice be oh I mean we've had a few of these over yeah. the years save your money and uh, save your money yeah yeah just again back just stop don't do it yeah um you know what it's the, the the amount of details and things that actually people are usually uh, it's funny I'll just spit out an answer at them and they'll be like oh I didn't think of that or this and that and you're like yeah you know anyway so um, things like really dumb things where they'll sound dumb the box art what the box looks like is like a, a, a weirdly critical thing if yeah I'm in and the box looks like ass yeah I'm just not even I'm gonna be like I don't. I don't even want to look at this. I don't care that it's incredible inside the box. And and how it, not just like how it look. It has to look beautiful, but also with board games specifically, this is like my biggest pet peeve. If you want to actually think about how like a, a like a merchant or, or like think about how a customer is picking up the box mm -hmm. and being like, what is this game? What is this? But also like me, how I'm putting it on the. You don't know how I'm going to put it on the shelf. I could put it sideways. I could put it upside down. I could put it backwards, forwards. This thing has to look. It has to. It has to show what it is from all sides of the box, basically. Uh, right. And and the back of the box better show the game. They better show the actual game. Yeah. Like I'm so tired of these board yeah. game uh, like uh, games not having a clear picture. This little box. Yeah. That shows the game, and you're like, I get to squint to see whatever. Yeah. And then there's a bunch of text, and you're like, just just stop just with not, the text. Stop man. with the text. Give me pictures. Just give me a big huge picture. Because yeah. ultimately, like, if I'm a half decent board game store, which you know all the ones that are selling board games are half decent. Yeah. Um, that you need to be able to turn the box over, show a customer, and actually be like, these are the components. You play it like this, and you actually can show mm -hmm. show what it is. Mm -hmm. When I turn a game over and I'm like, my first thing I usually say is like, 
Well, this box doesn't show you very well what the game looks like, <laughs> but it actually plays like this. Not yeah, a good start, right? It's like not, it's, not. it's it's a tough sell, yeah, right? Yeah. There's some great games that have really poor packaging. So oh, so that's that's like one thing. What does it look like? It's funny. The, the first the first main questions are all seem superficial because people are like, but the game's great. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we get to that, yeah, exactly. And then the next thing will be, <clears throat> uh, you know, what does this cost? Is a big one. <laughs> Stores want to know. Like what is this thing? This idea that you have, like, what do you, what do you, what do you think it's going to cost per unit? Because yep. if it's, uh, and it's tough when you're new because like you don't have that uh, the scale yet to 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 get lower the price down enough. Mm -hmm. But so that's a barrier. So you have to, but you have to have, at least you need to have those answers like right away. If you can't give answers, people are just going to be like, okay, I'm already. You're not serious. Like the yep. serious people have like answers to the common questions. Uh, and then the next one ends up being like, okay, tell me about the game and it better have an answer that, or, or you better have some way of answering the reflex question will be like, well, this sounds like this or like that. Like, how is your thing actually unique or different? Or why yeah. would I care about this versus that? Like, yeah. so again, quite often you see it a lot in the TCG world or whatever, where you're like, it's very competitive in that sphere as well. And you want to make a new game. Card games are kind of oddly the easiest games to make because it's just like arts and some text and getting it printed isn't too bad. But then you trying to get on a shelf is near next to impossible because of like until until it catches on. Um, but you would be like, well, yeah, so like how do you make your game uh, different enough that, that people will want to buy it, collect it, play it? So um, that's the next thing. And, and sometimes people have answers to all of these things. And, and I'll be like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because like I don't, it just like because then yeah. I'm like because then the final barrier is like yeah, but who else is in this? Like, so this is a great point that you bring out. So <laughs> for some reason, I, I watch a lot of like, like guitar channels and stuff like that. I, I'm, that's my other little hobby is music, or at least just like watching people, other people <laughs> play music because like I have little time to do it myself. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, w I was watching another video. This guy was talking about um, a big company. It's like, how would I get my my product on this big website, or it's almost like asking how would I get it on this like massive company's website. You're almost like thinking about in reverse. It's like, what does that, like, what does that company, why would that company want your product? That's mm -hmm. almost like the mindset you have to get into, right? So, and the same is for like a little hobby shop like us. Ultimately, uh, the kinds of board games we want to carry are the ones people are already looking to buy. Yeah. Like people know the names of things. That's when like usually when Jay and I start hearing the name of a game we don't have mm -hmm. a few times, that's when we're like, oh, maybe we should actually look into that yeah. and bring it in. So it's 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 kind of like a reverse thing. Like we're not traditionally like pushing games on people. It's kind of the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you make your game searchable or like people are looking for it, right? Yeah. Well, we live in a crazy wacky world where like you can market your stuff for pretty much for free yeah. if you're really good at social media if you get on youtube if you put the effort in on that stuff you can really kind of like generate a lot of buzz for your product mm -hmm. right and i actually kind of think you know i'm kind of caught in the middle about this like part partially i'm always miffed when board games or products go to kickstarter but i yeah. but i'm not upset when people do it which i think are the right reasons to actually like when they actually need to. Mm -hmm. Like if a game's so small that like hobby stores are not even gonna look at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kickstarter, Kickstarter and things like that are a great, are a great yeah. place to go. Look at how, you, you, realistically you're gonna have to look at how you're gonna sell direct mm -hmm. to consumers to get going, to build up that name brand, mm -hmm. to, to get to the point where like stores like ours are like, oh, that, that game looks interesting. I actually wanna search for it and, and, and my customers are actually looking for that product. How do I bring it in? Oh, it was only Kickstarter. That's a bummer. Hopefully, it comes to retail yeah. soon. That's when you're kind of in that sweet spot, right? So, I think yeah, some companies manage the transition. Yeah, and if they do, then it could be. But it's tough though, because you could have uh, you could have like a game that has like a, it's like a one hit wonder, you know, where it kind of comes, Definitely. it's great, and then it doesn't have much. You know, the goal is to try and get to that. Um, you call it evergreen status where it's just everyone you know like like i still can't believe how many Catans and ticket to rides still sell in the store here i keep thinking like doesn't everyone own this yet <laughs> so uh now with regards to miniatures i think it's even harder <laughs> <laughs> yeah um 
I, and I don't know why necessarily it is like we always talk about this like you know the other day Chris and I just exchanged a brief like you know how does is anyone gonna dethrone GW ever and right now it's like no like it's just like I don't I you know there's gonna be a lot of people through the camera or on the other side they're gonna be like well this game's doing really well and all you privateer guys, God bless you. You guys, like, you know, you know yeah. God bless. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, that are like, it's got, we've got 200 players the other day. That's, that's so good. Um, but really. As the last uh, blisters <laughs> scraped off the shelf of the last holdout in yeah. Ontario for yeah, selling yeah. it in stores. No, yeah. it's, they, people have been burning that for, for heating for a while. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, your next Star Wars. Um, anyway, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, there's just nothing on the horizon. So. Uh, trying to see like like who can do it and it's like yeah it, it's 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 really tough that the the, the it, it's not and and again the other the 3d printing is not doing it or going to do it anytime soon um there's no company that's got the resources or the or the right game right now even the big ip games uh as we've seen in in, in at least in the last six months especially just don't have that that ability to steal dollars when well, i always feel like uh two 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 like kind of like uh, macroeconomic factors here like number one like you know we're kind of in that post-pandemic recession yep. hobby shops are barricading their walls and trying to figure out ways to just stay in business and during those times you know we, we tend to be a lot more conservative oh, yeah. and uh you know you kind of lean even heavier on your your core products right so like G gw is going to laugh during this period because they're like everyone's going to be reaching for the safe the safe thing right safe and then thing. number two is like you yeah we are in a period in miniature specifically where we have you know almost a monopoly at this point yep. uh in terms of like wall space you know i'll always go to that like it's not a monopoly but it's a monopoly of wall space like <laughs> if you go into a hobby shop it's almost like you know 95 percent of them are going to be gw only and then 5% of them are going to have a couple of small other games, smatterings of other miniature games. Try like try getting on that wall space, right? That's that's really ultimately what, I mean, what the goal is, I right? I think even then, you may have, you may be a store that's been around like us where you have some other games on the wall, um, but there's nothing to replace those games with. There's nothing like coming. There, and there always used to be, right? Like there's always, always like, to be. And oh, like, we got to cycle drops zone out because it's kind of busted. But there's another but game. There's another game we can try and bring in. Yeah. And I think the yeah. reason that that isn't a thing is the Kickstarter thing, probably. Yeah. Is is games don't go to, they don't go like get created and then go to distribution and then like just no. go to stores based on like good hype and marketing. It's like they kickstart everyone that wants it gets it and then stores don't want it because it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> we've, Distributors we've, don't want it. We've because explained it was, this yeah, in like, our yeah. other videos. Yeah. yeah, it's just like so, I, it's oddly enough, Kickstarter is. Well, here's indirectly made here's a little bit bigger. of free advice uh, to to nobody who's listening that will yeah. actually be <laughs> yeah. making their own miniature game, but mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to hear. I think regardless, yeah. but one one thing I hear from distributors all the time, and the reason they've dropped uh, other miniature games, it's the skews, man. Like like miniature games are horrifying for the amount of little skews they'll put put through like a distributor through. Yeah, like every time you put something in a little blister. It's like one little it's item that's like code. six bucks or something like to to buy. It's like no, don't stop it. Yeah, put put things in bigger boxes, in teams, teams, yeah. sets, whatever. Mm -hmm. Make your and like I said, this goes back to like when we're talking about like how it faces in the store. Make it as easy for the distributor to process your order, mm -hmm. and then make it easy for the retailer to shelf on the wall. That matters like almost half as much as how good your product is, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> and then, and that's the problem is there is they have to inventory so many things, keep track of so many things, and then things get changed and repackaged, and then they have to, and then they're stuck with like, it's funny like a product could become unsellable because they took two things and jammed them in a new box together, so the two individual ones become all of a sudden like not good anymore because the value is not there or something like just like simple things like that. Can can create. It's kind of like uh, when games are top reboxes, uh, Combat Patrol sometimes or something, and they put. <clears throat> sometimes the old one is people want the old one still. Yeah. But then sometimes the opposite happens, and they're like, "Oh, the new one's just way better than the old one." Not it. And then right. so the old one's just like never good. <laughs> it's just sitting there. So. Uh, I'll, and I'll, and I'll, that's another code on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take a shot at the three D guys a little se second here, and this is maybe some free advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, every. <laughs> 3D printing company that I've seen uh, outside of like maybe a couple, they the, uh, they keep like either they bring us samples, they send us samples, oh, samples, or I got a buddy who's showing us some stuff. Um, 
And he's like, oh, this is their retailers. This is their retail ready stuff. And I'm looking at the packaging. I'm like, what is this? Oh, yeah. And like, it, it sounds harsh, but like, I can't put this on my shelf. No. It doesn't look like a serious product, right? Mm -hmm. It'll be in like a little cardboard box or it'll be in a blister without art. Like, it's just like, Maybe it's it, got a sticker. It's got to be, it's got to look at the very least like something close to a GW or an Infinity or like something that looks like a serious product on the wall. And, uh, and you got to put the art on the spine too. You cannot, you cannot, that is actually probably more important. I would rather you put the art on the spine than on the front. Yeah, the front, front could be blank for all who I cares. care. <laughs> Just put it on the spine. That, all of your, uh, all of your data and art, yeah. or you get your artist to work only on the, make the spine look incredible with the whatever. And then, cause it's going to get bookended. Stores just don't have enough space. That's so right. you have That's to right. like cram boxes in tight together. People, we would love to be able to have everything front facing and it looks so pretty when you walk in. It does look really good. You get to grab your box like this and th that, that's yeah, not a reality. Not no store can do that. Gonna yeah. Not going to happen. Not going to Only Games Workshop can do that because yeah. they only they sell their own products. But yeah, yeah. Don't, don't just the the blank box with no spine. You're like, what? What? what now I got a Sharpie something here. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. It's so bad. Yeah, yeah. Just, just talk about making yeah. your product. And I get myself. all that stuff adds adds cost to what you're doing. But at the end of the day, like uh, yeah. it's the difference between like selling it, not literally selling, selling it, right? it non-selling yeah, it. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I. I <sighs> I mean, it, this is it, it. It's it sucks. It sounds cynical, but like we are unfortunately in a we are in a position position right now. I think where a lot of these like small creators, like you can you can look up look them up and find them. Like people that are making new miniature games, people that are making new card games, people that are making brand new board like brand new people that are making board games. There's no there's no secret or surprise why they're using the Kickstarter model. There's no secret or surprise why they're you know operating these like little web stores where they sell direct to customers and. Quite frankly, they're trying to use the influencer model mm -hmm. more than anything else. You know, they'll send out a hundred of something to like a hundred influencers and just like cross their fingers and pray like yeah. five of them decide that, oh, I'm, I'm going to actually show this off on my channel and maybe that generates. So it, it's changed a lot. Yeah. There's still a ton of like opportunity out there um, to, to like actually make something and, and have it sell. It's just probably the, the, it's, the bar is probably higher than ever to actually like get it in the distri distributor level, get it into the retailer store. So That's where the real challenge is now. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and almost every genre and aspect it's, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's yeah, there's just so much going on, whatever game it is, card game, miniature game, board game. Um, so yeah, have a plan, have a big plan. Use every tool you can you can find, um, and yeah, and don't once again don't skimp on the packaging. Like I, I even even the hobby stuff. I uh, I'll say it again. I, I put it on their Facebook page, and and, and I got a bunch of trolls give me shit because they're fanboys. But um, that's okay. You're wrong, and I'm right. But the um, <laughs> that's the second one times I just said yeah, that today. This is the second. <laughs> no, this, is, uh, this was the Monument Hobbies <laughs> box that I can't stop oh, complaining man. about. Great product, wonderful product. And the boxes are terrible. It sucks. It's just it's it just a, a stupid black box with their with their logo on it. Yeah. I'm like a box of paint needs to show me yeah. like what's in it, and it needs to look exciting. Yeah. I know even just paint needs to, you need to be able to instantly see what's in it, how cool it looks. You you need to have beautiful world class looking. Get the best painters in the world. Paint some models of your paints. Put yeah, it right on the front. I, People will buy a box of paint because they think the orc on it looks amazing. Never mind the guy has no chance of painting that orc like that because yeah. he doesn't have the skill. Uh, but it doesn't matter because and it's the same thing. It doesn't end like this is this is a thing in every retail. The same thing you go to a grocery store or something, you know, or whatever you're buying, even a mundane product. And the it, packaging it is like funny because like obviously there's a ton of research that backs this up, like, yeah. like the brand branding and how Entire you market your product. Like people, people will buy like the the soap that's three dollars instead of one dollar because the package looks nicer. Yeah. So you assume the the, the product is better. Yeah. But the funny thing in, in our industry, and, and I'm always stunned at this, is how few companies actually pick up the phone and call a brick and mortar store. Yeah, yeah. They think they know better than yeah. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's insane to me. There's all this free Yeah. It's like I get it, right? There's gonna be some guys you get on the phone with and they're just gonna tell you the craziest shit you've ever heard. The guy's gonna go straight into but I hate Gabe's workshop and I <laughs> if you talk to some distributors and said hey, who are some level headed stores you deal with pick up the phone and call those guys yeah. and get some and advice from those guys. Yeah, yeah. Because like they're in the trenches, they're dealing with these things, they're mm -hmm. selling your product. They could probably tell you some things that you don't that you don't know or that you sure. haven't thought of. And just take it all in. Just plot the data points. You don't even have to. The yeah. guy could be crazy, but if he's you like don't don't poo-poo anything that they 
because there might be a nugget here and there. And yeah. If you can plot your chart and say, you know what, uh, man, a lot of people are complaining about our boxes, then maybe. Well, and it's like, it's know. one of those things. It's like, yeah, you, you, you might be like, oh, but they're selling great. It's like, well, they could have sold better. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's really, yeah, yeah. that's always my that's sort of thing. It's like, like well, you, you're, you're handicapping yourself for no reason. You are right, handicapping so. yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, uh, you know, and I appreciate this, the other side of it. And if you've already printed a lot of boxes, you're not just going to replace them. No, all. no. But for phase sure. them out slowly and, you know, make it work. So, um, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how people do it. Somehow new games come out. People are doing it. I and I, I say like, I think the people that I know it, uh, that, that make stuff uh, do it because they really love it and they they make things because they want to make things. I think ultimately creative people are doing it for non cynical reasons. I think those are the people that end up kind of falling into success in a weird way. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like even hobby store. Like I think if you open a hobby store to try and make a lot of money, oh god, you'll probably <laughs> yeah be very disappointed and fail um but if you do it for the right reasons and you kind of uh, uh you, you can almost like fall into some success uh that way i, I think too uh whether you're opening a store or launching a product maybe people also underestimate how much how much money you need <laughs> oh phew. yeah <laughs> like yeah like yeah. on one hand and it's all the thing like on one hand you're like oh it's not that bad to get a model design and this and that yeah but then mm. like when you get into spending on packaging or producing at a scale that a distributor might want or x or y like it's you need a lot you really can't just roll it you, it's like whatever number you're thinking of double or triple it and then even the, that'll make it successful even companies that have done tons of kickstarters seem to seem to always mess up this <clears throat> it's the it's the attrition of time on your money you're right right just like the the period of time where nothing happens mm -hmm. or or where you're not making any money mm -hmm. and and how that negatively impacts your bottom line whether you like you have to keep spending to kind of like keep trying or whatever whatever your like overheads are even if it's a small project uh dragged out over a, a period of unpredictable amount of time right i mean yeah I've, I've seen games and products that are like objectively kind of like they're okay but they do well because the marketing and the money behind it is like really good mm -hmm. so uh yeah it's it's whatever you can do to stand out and sometimes it means that you have to just blow a lot of money to make it like uh whether you whether that means you go and do those launch have those booths at those like uh far away trade shows and things like or so you got to get that that name it's like especially with board games if you get the name out it's like because like like there's no board game that's good this gets designed today that has changed anything like i, I feel like we've reached a point of like Trying to come up with a unique board game is like next to impossible. Like with the sheer number that get released, like yeah, yeah. like every worker placement find game a way. is basically yeah. the same, right? Like, yeah, there's so, core there's core tenants for sure. You yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. but a lot yeah. of the ones that do well right now are because they just, they, you know, because they look cool. The box looks cool. Cool this theme, stuff, look yeah. cool, cool twist on an old thing. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I think there's some good companies to reference if you're if you're in this. Like, I think Stonemeyer is an interesting company. I always go back to them. I really like how open they are. Like the one of the owners, like he communicates really well. He's written a few essays on on uh, on the design. topic of game design and, and actually like manufacturing and production and mm -hmm. and selling it to retail. And he's kind of talked a lot about that. Really interesting stuff. I I always think really, Guild Ball is a fascinating case study, and I, th I think we're going to do a video on it at some point soon. Uh, the rise and fall of Guild Ball, but I think the rise is a very interesting, fascinating yes. thing because these guys took literally uh, a product nobody knew anything about and just went to, uh, literally went to tournaments and went like big events and went to Adepticon and demoed the hell out of it, yeah. put, put the blood, sweat, equity into it and made it a massive product. Yeah. Uh, that got into the brick and mortar stores from basically nothing. So mm -hmm. that that's I think a, a, a tale of like how it, it's still possible. It's still yeah. possible with enough with yeah. a with a good plan mm -hmm. and, uh, and and sort of like the good like work ethic. Yeah. you can you can still make yeah. it happen. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have some comments about, I know we rambled on a lot of different topics, yeah. but. Um, ramble. Yeah, I mean, like that's why you that's why you come here, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, let us know what you think about if you have any experience yourself with this sort of stuff, or um, if there's any products that kind of stick out to you uh, as like a as a as a reference point for anything we were talking about today. That would be kind of cool. Until next time, take care, guys. Cheers. See you.